I'm Dan Kenner, and we're back with Dr. James Butler, expert in bioesthetic dentistry. And we've been talking about dental implants, which is, which is a relatively new thing uh, in dentistry, it, you know, I, I suppose the last 20 years or so. And I'm sure our audience would really be interested to hear what other kinds of things are in the hopper that are, that are being developed or things that are already available that people may not know about and not know to, to ask for. Yeah, you know, that's a great question because, you know, uh, people will learn a lot faster to do something they get asked to do. So we try to raise awareness, uh, the fact that uh, uh, one of the biggest things is we'd like to see people get a more whole mouth diagnosis mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, do things like measure wear rates and the evenness of bites to see how it's affecting your longevity. Uh, to uh, uh, find out ways to, to get your body to heal when we do procedures. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I, an uneven bite can also affect your longevity. I, I can understand how it could wear out parts of the mouth, but uh, tell us more about uh, some of the problems that an uneven bite can cause. Well, it can cause, you know, headaches, discomfort, chewing, uh, the uh, degeneration of your jaw joint, which is a very complicated mm -hmm. joint and very hard to fix. Mm -hmm. So if we have early warning signs of jaw joint problems, we want to get that addressed uh, because that can, that can be a very serious problem. Uh, it does affect your chewing and it does affect your comfort. So, and so you have measurement devices for, for calibrating uh, the correct adjustments for the jaw and the, the bite. We do have ways to restore the bite to good function, uh, absolutely, and, and not every generalist is, is aware of all the ways, but there's usually resources in most communities to get that diagnosis if you feel like your bite's not working well. Mm -hmm. um, we need to you know, make sure that we address that because that's a, that's a big health issue. Well, if it's really uneven, then it seems like the, that the enamel in some areas would be worn down in, in, in some areas, but not worn down in others. How, how, what do you do to correct that? Well, that's a good question, and, and uh, you know, sometimes braces, but you know, not everybody over 50 wants braces, so mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we, we actually recontour the teeth, and, and we have better materials than ever to do that. Uh, we can you know, add to the teeth, we can change the size and shape and color. Uh, we have uh, better porcelain systems now that are lifelike. We used to do a lot of this work in gold, but uh, mm -hmm. certainly with the, the expense and, and the color of it, it's not a great choice nowadays. But we've had some newer, uh, you know, uh, injection molded porcelains now, like uh, Emax mm -hmm. is a good example. Uh, there's other materials that are, that are very hard and they mimic enamel. And so what we do is we can put a new enamel onto the teeth in the right shape and size and direction so that we can crack these problems. So when you say you can reshape the bite and reshape the teeth, uh, what you're doing without braces, so, so how, do you, how do you go about that? Well, it's very simple. You know, we, we have to take off some of the damaged enamel and, and, mm -hmm. and some of the old fillings, but uh, the, the materials are, are durable enough and the technology of deciding how to make the bite is good enough that those that are trained in, in biostatics and there's other, other uh, ways of doing it, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, people who are really trained in, in a whole mouth diagnosis and treatment plan and using these newer materials, we can have something that has high longevity and high beauty and that's why you get the bioesthetic mm -hmm. in both parts of the equation. So mm -hmm. uh, these materials have really freed us up to do more than we used to do. Mm -hmm. So correcting the bite can improve, can, can not only prevent headaches and things like that, but it can al also actually help us to live longer. And that's because we can digest our food better and uh, ha having a, a strong jaw strengthened by balancing the bite and putting in implants uh, when necessary can help us to live longer. And I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, and that's absolutely correct. What else? What else does strengthening the jaw do for us that helps yeah. us to, to live longer? Does it well, it turns out that, that humans are intended to be vertical chewers, and when our teeth wear down and our jaw joints aren't working right, we chew like cows. You know, we, we don't chew properly, so we don't get the digestive system. The whole system is designed to work together. Mm -hmm. And when we become vertical chewers again because our teeth fit properly and our jaw joints are aligned properly, mm -hmm. then we're going to digest better we're gonna be able to make food choices that, that, that are more favorable because we're not afraid to eat this or that. 
<clears throat> and then the whole system's going to work better. And that's when we get our maximum longevity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you said one thing that you just <clears throat> briefly went over when we were talking about implants. You said that uh, the implants will help uh, uh, vitalize the bone because the bone right. is intended to hold something and that implants are the best thing we have until we can grow our own. Now, what are the possibilities that we'll be able to, to grow new teeth using stem cells or some other technology in the future? They're, they're talking 10 to 15 years before that's really? viable. Yeah, and really? uh, they're already growing human enamel in, uh, in laboratories and experimenting with it. So, uh, but you know, ideally we would grow your tooth from your stem cells and that would be the way to do it. So, but that's, that's down the pike a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. So you need to be able to live another 10 or 15 years by yeah. strengthening your bite so you can be around when it's possible to grow teeth again. Yeah. Now, you said the stem cells, they would come from, from, from yourself. So they oh, come yeah. from your blood yeah. or from... Uh, we we use those in, in limited applications now. Just through your own blood sample, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll concentrate the part that, that heals cuts, basically. Mm -hmm. And we'll put that somewhere that's in trouble and it'll uh, amazingly stimulate a regrowth and regeneration of that area. Mm -hmm. uh, plastic surgery uses it, uh, orthopedics uses it, and we use it. So mm -hmm. it's, that's good stuff, you know, and, and that's just the scratch in the surface of what's possible. But, you know, we use your own cells to help your own body. We mm -hmm. just put them where you need them the most. Well, this is really fascinating, and, it, and it's really a message of hope. I'm, I'm just thrilled to have you on the show, and I hope that uh, you can come back again and uh, give us an update and a report and, and more information about bioesthetic dentistry. I'm Dan Kenner, and we've been talking with Dr. James Butler, who's an expert in bioesthetic dentistry. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.